Shalom Malachim, peace be upon you, and welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean, your host. Website can be found at www.scriptureandprophecy.com. That's where you go to support this mission of truth. It's also where you go to find the archives, uh, sign up for the email, and get access to the Biblical Hebrew for beginners, all kinds of goodies there. www.scriptureandprophecy.com Well, this week... Like all weeks, we're going to start with some wisdom and some encouragement from the Psalms. We're going to be looking at Psalm 98, 99, and 100 because they're all only about five to eight verses apiece. And uh, then we're going to be looking for some wisdom from the book of James as we continue our study in that. And so we'll be reading chapter four today, which is full of about as much uh Wisdom as you can stuff into 17 verses. Uh, James chapter 4 is loaded uh, with all kinds of different things. And so we'll be taking a, a good look at that. So that is what is on the agenda today. Uh, I don't want to ramble this morning. I just want to dig right in. So let's do that. Starting with Psalm 98. Nine verses for that one. Then nine verses for Psalm 99. And only five for Psalm 100. So... Maybe a shorter podcast today. We'll see. All right, let's begin. Psalm 98, verse 1, King James Bible. Sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. The Lord hath made known his salvation, his righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. He hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp, with the harp and with the voice of a psalm. With trumpets and sound of cornet, make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof the world, and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together. Before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world, and the people with equity. So that is Psalm 98. I just want to drill in on that last two verses. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together. Before the Lord... For he cometh to judge the earth with righteousness, shall he judge the world and the people with equity. By the way, that word equity there is the Hebrew word meshar, and it simply means straightness, uprightness, or evenness. So he's coming to judge the world with righteousness and evenness. In other words, it'll be his, his, his judgment will be properly balanced, right? He's going to judge uprightly. He's coming to judge the world with righteousness. You see, we've been singing psalms about this and this looking forward to the day when God comes to make everything right, to completely and uh, literally set up his kingdom goes all the way back to to David writing psalms and even further back than that to the prophets to the psalms longing for that return and we just might be the generation to see it he's coming to judge with righteousness with evenness psalm 99 the Lord reigneth Let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims. Let the earth be moved. Very first verse, it's just just this picture of the authority of God. And how there should be a proper fear. What does it say? It said, the Lord reigneth. Let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims. Let the earth be moved. Verse 2, The Lord is great in Zion, and he is high above all the people. 
Let them praise thy great and terrible name, for it is holy. King James uses that word uh, often. The word there, terrible. Let's just take a real quick look. I'll do this on the fly so I can give you the actual Hebrew word here. Um, so you don't get the wrong idea. Let them praise thy great and terrible name. It is the word yari. Yari. It means to fear, to revere, to be afraid. Sometimes it can mean dreadful, but it's a it's it's a proper fear, right? And by the way, a lot of people think, oh, when the Bible says to, to fear God, it just means respect God. No, it means fear God. <laughs> it means be in awe of God. Yes, it does mean reverence and honor and respect, but the main uh, uh, definition for Yari is to fear, to literally be afraid. Let them praise thy great and fearful name, terrible name, for it is holy. The king's strength also loveth judgment. Thou dost establish equity. Remember the word equity means evenness, righteousness, uprightness. Thou executest judgment and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt ye the Lord our God, and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among them that call upon his name. They call upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spake unto them in the cloudy pillar. They kept his testimonies and the ordinances that he gave them. Thou answerest them, O Lord our God, thou wast a God that forgavest them, though thou tookest vengeance of their inventions. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. Psalm 105 verses. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Many attempts have there been to stamp out the Bible, to stamp out the Word of God, to stamp out the truth of the one true God, and yet, here we are, approximately 5,000 years into humanity, and his truth still endures. In spite of all those evil attempts, his truth still endures. All right, let's move on. James chapter 4. All kinds of wisdom in here. Let's break this thing down. James chapter 4, King James Bible. And what it's, I'll just give you a one-line sentence. What this is all about, it's re the rebuke of worldliness. The rebuke of worldliness. James chapter 4 is a word for this generation. And when I say this generation, I'm not talking about the secular people or the atheist people, the people who don't believe and worship God. I'm talking, is James writing to unbelievers? No, he's writing to the church. This is to those who claim to love God, who claim to follow Jesus. I see this so often. I'm getting ready to go on a tangent. I see this so often where pastors and Christians view these letters as if they're written to an unbelieving world. Oh, that doesn't apply to me. That's to the, un that's to the unbeliever, right? Or when Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father. Oh, that's not to believers. That's what people think. Who do you think he's talking to? 
take these words to heart. James chapter 4, let's have a look. Verse 1. From whence comes wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust, that ye war with your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have. You cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet ye have not because you ask not. Ye ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. First thing he's saying, you know what? You don't have because you don't ask. And even when you do ask, you still don't get it because your motives are impure. Your desires are impure. Right? That's what he's saying. He's saying you, the only reason you're asking for what you're asking for is so you can consume it upon your own lusts. You lust and you have not. You kill and you desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and you war, yet you have not because you ask not. You ask and you receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. Verse 4. Ye adulterers, and adulteresses, know you not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. I wonder how serious Christians are taking that today. Because I see a whole lot of churches and a whole lot of people who call themselves Christian who love the world. Love it. I see so many churches, oh, we just want to be relevant to the, to the world. No, you're called to be set apart from the world. Not relevant. Set apart. You're supposed to be salty. You're supposed to be a light on a hilltop. You're supposed to stand out like a sore thumb. Do you not know, James says, that friendship with the world is enmity with God? You can't be a worldly person and be a godly person. Not possible. Then he goes on, verse 5, Do you think that the scripture saith in vain the spirit dwelleth in us and lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Again, he's talking about you can't have both. You can't be double-minded. You can't say, I love God here, but then I'm going to do this thing over here that's worldly and sinful. I'm going to willfully make these choices every day. Look, none of us are perfect, right? One of my favorite th sayings is, I'm not who I want to be, but I'm not who I used to be, right? We're being transformed. Not who I want to be, but I'm not who I used to be. James is saying, let go of the double-mindedness. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Resist the devil, and the devil will flee. Verse 9, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. He's saying, don't be afraid to be destroyed about your sin. Humble yourself before God. Mourn before God. Verse 10. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Speak not evil of one another. Listen, friends. Last week, James warned about controlling your tongue, about watching your mouth, right? We talked about that extensively. Go listen to last week's if you if you missed it. 
Listen, he's going to make that point again. Because just like today, even back then, they had trouble where people, where brothers and sisters in Christ would gossip about one another, talk about one another, say mean things about one another. Verse 11, speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speak evil of his brother and judges his brother speak evil of the law and judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judges another? He's saying, who do you think you are judging your brother or your sister? Do you not understand that there's one lawgiver? Right? Who's able to not only save your soul, but also destroy it? You know, God, the one who can save and destroy, and yet you are so prideful as to think that you can judge? That's what he's saying. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. Who are you? Who are you that judge another? Who do you think you are? Verse 13. Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go do go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanishes away. He saying, don't be so arrogant as to say, Hey, I'm, tomorrow I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to go into the city. I'm going to do all this. I'm going to accomplish all of this. Our attitude is to be, Lord willing, I'm going to do that. And the reason why we say, Lord willing, I'm going to do this tomorrow, is because we're acknowledging that it's really up to God. Right? Because like James is saying here, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, and our life is but a vapor. It's here today, gone tomorrow. It's that quick. It can end that easily. We have, we have zero control. We think we have control over all these things, but we don't. That's why you'll hear me say, Lord willing, I'll be back with you again on Wednesday or I'll be back with you again on Friday because the truth is I don't know. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and vanishes away. Three more verses. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or do that. But now, ye rejoice in your boastings, all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. If you know what the right thing is, if you know you should do this, and you choose not to do it, if you know it's right, but you choose not to do it anyway, it's sin. I love the book of James because he leaves no room for you to twist his words. I see people twist the words of the Apostle Paul and some of the other things and try to make their sensuality okay, try to make their sinful behavior okay. James don't let you get away with that. That's why I love that book. He's very, very clear. It's sin, he says. Well, at the risk of rambling and adding a bunch of human nonsense to what's a perfect word of God, I'm just going to end the broadcast there. Thank you for listening. Thank you for praying for me. I want to thank the Patreon subscribers who support this mission. You know, this is the time of year where uh, the funds are more sparse. Um, the support is always way, way down. And so the Patreon subscribers, I just want to thank you for your faithfulness and uh, providing and and just blessing me and blessing this work. I'm very, very grateful. The same goes to those who use the post office box or PayPal. Very, very grateful for all of you. Thank you so much uh, for your support. Uh, but more than anything, I, I uh, could use your prayers. I always need direction from God. What direction to go, what to write, what to podcast about. And so I appreciate uh, all of you. And also, I'm taking on a lot. Uh, I was up at 4 a.m. this morning, okay, trying to get trying to do all this. Plus, I'm currently taking a course uh, that I get to work on 
as soon as I wrap this up, then I go to my full-time job. So I could use strength because I just don't have it in my on my own. I just don't have the capacity uh, to take on all that I feel like God has led me to take on. So your prayers are much, much appreciated. All right. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless.